Symbolism is best understood by going back to the beginning, the way beginning. Imagine you're an ancient human. You're a farmer or a hunter-gatherer thousands of years ago. When is safer? Day or night? Day, right? Because you can see. The sun is out, it's clear, you can see any animals hiding in the bushes. You have a better chance of survival. At night, it is dangerous. Things are scary. You have a higher chance of dying, frankly, because of an animal or an enemy sneaking up on you. Night is dark. Day is light. Dark means dangerous. Light means safe. Dangerous is bad. Safe is good. Dark symbolizes bad. Light symbolizes good. It's as simple as that. This is one of our oldest symbols, and you can see it everywhere, but perhaps no clearer than in Star Wars. The light side and the dark side. The bad guys wear dark colors, the good guys wear light colors. Luke is good, Darth Vader is bad. Let's go deeper. Darth Vader has a red lightsaber. Why? It's not random. They could have chosen any color on Earth, so why did they choose red? Well, what else is red? What might that ancient human have seen that was red? Maybe blood? When does blood happen? After violence, right? So Darth Vader is cloaked in the colors of night, which signify danger, darkness, the unknown, and he wields a weapon that is the color of blood, which signifies danger, violence, pain. Would Darth Vader be the same level of scary if he wore bright pink and carried a yellow lightsaber? Probably not. So that's what symbolism is. It's not so scary, right? It's just kind of figuring out why a certain thing makes you feel the way it does. Why does Darth Vader scare me? Well, maybe it's in part because of the colors he's wearing, the colors of darkness, of night, of blood. So maybe his color scheme is symbolizing those things. Maybe he has that color scheme on purpose to make you think of danger and feel fear. That's all symbolism is. I think part of the reason why symbolism seems eye-rollingly boring or difficult is because when it is taught, it is taught as an absolute. The blue curtains mean she's depressed. Gatsby's green light means ambition and so forth, but symbolism isn't about memorization or there being only one right answer. After all, only a Sith deals in absolutes. No, symbolism is about communication. And it's not just in stories. Check out red animals and plants. Bright red berries, red mushrooms, red tree frogs. If you know the first thing about the outdoors, you know to steer clear of bright red things. They're usually bad for you. What colors do you like to wear? Do you wear bright neons? If so, maybe you want the world to know that you are bright and fun and bubbly. Do you wear mostly black? If so, maybe you want the world to know that you are serious and brooding. Do you wear a lot of clothing related to your hobby or the school that you attend? That might mean you feel pride for that institution or that part of yourself. Do you not really care what you wear? Well, that says something about your personality too, doesn't it? My favorite example for this is The Woman in the Bar. Picture a movie, a James Bond type movie. Our hero is in a bar. Then the bar goes quiet and the hero turns to see a beautiful woman walk in. She is drop dead gorgeous, classy, elegant, sexy, and she's wearing a dress. She walks across the room and every eye in the room turns to watch as she sits beside our hero and orders a drink. What color is her dress? Maybe you imagined her in red. Earlier, we said red meant violence, which it sometimes does, but it can also symbolize love. Think about Valentine's Day hearts, or sex, or passion, or fire. Red, it's a powerful color. Maybe you imagined her with matching lipstick, too. Or maybe you imagined her in a stylish little black dress, mysterious, dark, maybe a femme fatale. Or maybe pink, which means something feminine, soft, right? Or gold, which reminds us of Gold, which is something rich, rare, and out of reach. I'm willing to bet not too many of you imagined her wearing orange or green or yellow. 
A character like her doesn't wear that sort of thing. So how did this happen? Did we think about every color in the world and choose the one to best represent her sexiness, her elegance, her beauty? Uh, maybe, and sometimes that's what authors do. But most likely, however, we didn't put that much thought into it. We just picked the one that fit. And sometimes that's also what authors do. Symbols can sometimes be unintentional, but that doesn't make them any less real. It seems like we picked red or black for her dress randomly, but it was based on that inner knowledge of how those colors make us feel and how we want this woman who's supposed to be alluring and sexy, how we want her to make us feel. Those two things go together, naturally, without us having to think too hard about it. That is symbolism. What we focused on here is just color symbolism, and it's a great place to start. The next time you watch a movie or TV, pay attention to the colors people are wearing and ask, why? Why are the Hogwarts houses given the colors they have? Why do the Twilight Vampire's eye colors change in the way that they do? Why does Belle in Beauty and the Beast wear blue at the beginning and yellow at the end? Why did they give Ariel red hair? Why did the creators of this story decide on these colors, either intentionally or unintentionally, and what message might they be trying to send through these colors? What message are you trying to send through your colors? Thanks again for watching. If you liked this, you might like our other nail video essay on vampires or our longer form book club type videos on Dante's Inferno coming out periodically now. And if you liked my nails, be sure to check out maniology.com and use our code CHILL10 for 10% off all regularly priced items. Subscribe, like, do all the things I'm supposed to ask you to do, and I'll see you back here next time. Bye!